Excited to present today. So my name is Matt Gordon. I'm a product manager on ICE focused on profiling. And um, this is just a quick snapshot of what exactly we'll be covering. Um, you know, the problem of unknowns, how do we profile in ICE today? Some of the details from probes to the ICE feed service um, to some new features we've added and, and methods for um, profiling and then um, wrapping it up with resources. So excited to take you through all of that. Um, to start off, this is the challenge, right? These are endpoints on your network, in our networks. What are they? What do we do with them? How secure are they? Who should they be able to talk to? What services should they have access to? To answer that, we need to profile. So we need to take those unknowns and we need to turn them into knowns. So you can see here, we've got light bulbs, we've got IoT cameras, we've got mobile devices, tablets, manufacturing, robotic arms, Raspberry Pis, and so on. Once we've known, once we have figured out what they are, we can then actually start to sort and segment and organize them. And that helps us get a better sense for the world that is our environment, what's going on, what to do with all of these endpoints. So we wanted to start off with just a couple questions to get a feel um, for, for what you all uh, are dealing with and seeing today. So the first question is, um, what percentage of the endpoints on your network uh, are currently unknown uh, versus, versus known and classified? And Slido should be popping up. Oh, my Slido doesn't want to cooperate. Thomas, I'm going to let you provide our commentary here. Since I'm no problem. We started out really strong with like 100%, but now people are getting in there and uh, 100%, it's kind of all over the... Sorry? Oh, no, go ahead. I'm saying we're all over the place now. We've got lots of people coming in with numbers all over the place. So okay. um, it's amazing. <laughs> the main thing is it looks like there's a lot of people that need some profiling in their lives because uh, there's some that's very, very small numbers um, and some that are doing pretty good. I see some 5% or less than 5% are unknown. So some people are doing a really good job. We might need them to help present one of these webinars for us. There we go. There we go. And that makes sense, right? The, the, the number of endpoints that are unknown may fluctuate over time. You may catch up, create a bunch of strong profiling policies, use them, um, you know, in all your authorization and segmentation, and then, your company purchases a, a whole host of new IoT endpoints and suddenly the percentage unknown uh, crops back up again until you have a slow Friday and you write those new profiles. So um, that makes sense and, and great to see that some folks are down in you know, the single digit percentage unknown. That's, that's fantastic. Um, so we're also eager to understand what endpoints are you most concerned about profiling? And the more specific you can get, the better. Um, so rather than IOT, you know, is it a, an infusion pump? Is it a Meraki camera? Um, we'd, we'd love to understand, um, those, those endpoints. Um, so Matt, if you can't see, for, yeah, you can't see it, we got, um, a lot of, a lot of very different answers. So cameras, fake Macs, medical devices, uh, patient scanners, guests, Printers, uh, non dot one X capable, yeah. Um, Makes sense. HMIs, phones, Wi Fi client, cell phones, video conferencing, yeah, just all over the place. Okay, good. Well, we've definitely got a, solutions for a few of those. Um, that's fantastic. So, for the profiling that you are doing in ICE. Um, we'd love to understand how you're generating those profiles. So how are you reducing unknowns today? Um, it can be the profiles that are built right into ice. Maybe you've, you're, you know, a, an early adopter and you're using some of those AI proposed rules that came out in 3.3, um, could be endpoint analytics on DNA center, you know, that's an integration through, um, PX grid. Maybe you're creating your own custom profiles or, or using another 
integration or, or some mix, um, some profiles from column A, some from column B, all of the above. We'd love to, love to get a feel. So a lot of uh, built-ins right. and Cisco provided. Looks like it's um, a lot of custom profiles and uh, at least uh, one Metagate in order. Uh, there's okay. a, someone's doing a mix of different things, mostly custom profiles. <laughs> With a <the> hope <laughs> and a prayer. <laughs> a hope and a prayer. Uh, that's funny. That's yeah. Well, hopefully we can uh, make that one a little more tangible. Solve that a little yeah. more quickly. Um, fantastic. Yeah, and that all makes sense, right? We would expect a mix. It's going to depend on the endpoints in your environment. It's going to depend on how you're using profiles. Um, what your starting point was, um, and what your plan is going forward as far as technologies and and endpoints. Um, so finally, where do you find yourself getting value from profiling? Uh, you can see some options across the bottom, right? Is it visibility and, and understanding what's on the network? Is it using those profiles and authorization? Is it tags and segmentation? Um, troubleshooting, you know, most endpoints can get on the network, no problem, that fall into this category, but you've got some some outliers or, or some other option that, you know, we haven't thought of or haven't suggested here. Yeah, so start out really strong with visibility, then segmentation uh, is a big one. Okay. So right now, segmentation, authorization policy, oh, visibility pop back. It's just, it's like visibility and segmentation are like fighting for the lead right now. So okay. th those are all really big. And we do have troubleshooting in there as well. Okay, yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Great. Yeah, I can still see there are a couple answers coming in. All right. Um, good. So we're going to get right down into how to actually profile, how to make this, how to make this happen, um, and continue to reduce those unknowns for you. So Thomas, I will let you drive from here for a little while until I jump back in. All right. So, um, what I wanted to point out is really what we look at when we're trying to drive those unknowns is we have two very different sources of information. Uh, the first I like to consider organizational, which is things that uh, you or other people in your organization already know about endpoints and you manually organize those things using endpoint groups, custom attributes or external databases. So I've done uh, several different webinars on some of these things, uh, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Uh, but basically, it's a very manual process of inputting what you know into some kind of a database or attribute uh, or manual assignment of a group. Whereas this concept of behavior, what this endpoint is doing on the network can be driven by uh, protocol information or flows. Uh, we have a, a feature in some of the a Cisco device is called device sensor, which can help get you that information straight in your, your radius accounting packet. And, and then also we have integrations through uh, PX grid so that you can get this information from some of our partners or other Cisco products, and they can give you more accurate, very uh, profiles, uh, protocol specific uh, information, in these different attributes. So you can make a better decision about what's out there. So, Probably the, the first place a lot of people start off with is what we call static endpoint groups in ICE. And the idea is you can just go create a group and start assigning MAC addresses from all your endpoints into these things. And you can even uh, do it via API. Um, when you, when you, you can create an endpoint, assign it statically into a group and do it that way. This is probably the easiest um, way to get started. But that is very manual and not very granular. Um, it's just one one big group. And if you ever wanted to recategorize it or uh, maybe reauthorize it a different way based on different attributes, uh, it's really helpful to have something more granular like endpoint custom attributes. And so this is something that you can do. You can go and you can define your endpoint attributes and then you can start to assign values in context visibility, which we'll, we'll show you here in a bit. So that's the other way to do it. Uh, with, with more granularity. And then if you really want to take it to the next level and kind of scale out that concept of custom attributes, we actually have a new feature beginning in ICE 3.2 where you're able to do uh, these custom attributes in configuration management databases. And you synchronize these things basically over like a REST uh, JSON API. And when you do that, it creates these 
these dictionaries of attributes. And again, you can use these attributes in your authorization policies so that when we see a specific MAC address, we go, oh yeah, that's that phone or that's that camera or that's uh, some kind of a, a medical scanner or a robot or whatever it happens to be. So all these different attributes can clue, clue you into the the assets and inventory of all your endpoints that you have that are probably part of some other bigger process in your in your company or organization. And then the last thing I'll, I'll I'll talk about here is the visibility setup wizard. And the the visibility setup wizard is a way if you're just starting out, you can go out and basically run a bunch of in-map scans and get a sense of what's out there in your network. It doesn't really scale to a full production network. I don't recommend you run it on a on a production network once you've already got ice going and connected to all your different switches. But if you want to get started, this is a, a, a nice, easy way to get started, uh, like a proof of concept or small deployment. Uh, and then once you do have um, some endpoints coming in, you start to see things. Uh, we recommend that you use context visibility. Uh, this is how you're able to actually see all of your endpoints, what they are, uh, and all of the different attributes and things. So you can actually go in and if you look at them, you can actually begin to see not only the general attributes, which is what we find with the different protocols, but then you can see the tab over there for the custom attributes where you can go in and you can edit those um, as, as you learn things or you wanna change things. You can also edit those attributes via API as well. So there's lots of different options there. So Matt, this is where I'm gonna hand it back to you. Perfect, thank you, Thomas. So as far as dynamic profiling, you know, we think of profiling as the backbone of visibility. Um, basically the ability to class those endpoints, it can be done statically. So for example, MAB, um, it can be done dynamically based on attributes collected by ICE. And that's what we really wanna focus on. Um, and those attributes come from sources, right? So here you see the sources that ICE uses. Um, we've got probes such as DHCP, um, HTTP, RADIUS, NMAP. We've got the device sensor. You have your device managers and those custom attributes that Thomas mentioned. So those sources give us those attributes and those attributes tell us the details of that endpoint. What is its DHCP class ID? What is its MAP OUI? Um, Asset X device platform, user agent, and so on. It could so even be those attributes. Oh, go ahead. Matt, I just want to mention, and, and the great thing about using, you can even use a combination of profiling and some of those custom attributes that we talked about, because the, the beauty of those organizational type attributes is they actually give you things that the network can't give you, right? So if you're tracking sure. things by department or by its, uh, uh, its maintenance, schedule or anything like that where you're trying to figure out should this thing even be on the network or who who's the responsible party or anything like that those are the kinds of things you can put into some of those other attributes yep that's exactly right and you can use all of that um, whether they're organizational attributes or they're you know sort of device specific that the network discovers you can use those to create a profile so much like you could with a person you know height weight hair color eye color and that gives you a sense for this person um, and what they look like, you can do that with an endpoint and figure out that this is, in fact, a Meraki camera or it's a, an iPhone 14 Pro um, or a Samsung Galaxy mobile device. So you use those attributes to create your profiles. And uh, we've got five ways to create profiles. We mentioned them earlier um, in the Slido poll. We'll actually dive deep in each one. But there are the built-in Cisco-provided ones that are right in us um, and that we add to. Um, there are Wi-Fi Edge Analytics. That's a new uh, feature set we've released um, for profiling uh, Apple Samsung points. Uh, we've got an option for you to have AI, ML, um, analyze your endpoints and propose new profiling policies. You can, of course, create your own. Uh, maybe you want to mix, again, of those, uh, those organizational attributes and some of what you're learning from your probes or the device sensor. Um, and then we've got our integrations, whether that's AI endpoint analytics, cyber vision or, or some other um, integration. Once you have that profile, um, you can set that authorization policy to decide that um, IoT cameras get access to certain services, um, printers get access to others, you know, employees, a third group, and, and, um, and 
you know, your, your, whatever, your badge readers to, to another area. And then finally really do that proper segmentation. Um, so you, we have this organized as a funnel because you're starting off with this huge volume of information, all of these attributes, you're organizing them into profiles, assigning that authorization, and then finally really using those tags to properly segment um, and, and create order in your environment. Yeah, so basically to get started, uh, all of the ICE profiling probes are controlled inside of this deployment area of the ICE policy administration node. So what you can do is simply go over to the profiling configuration tab. Uh, first of all, you can see that all of the uh, nodes have the, pol the PSN capability turned on by default. Uh, one other optimization is that you can assign a node group to clusters in different regions. This basically heaps the profiling information specific only to a certain region. It doesn't make sense to spread every single profiling update worldwide to all the PSNs. Uh, in smaller deployments, this isn't a problem, but as you get much larger, uh, this can be an optimization. So the uh, ability to keep everything within a node group for profiling uh, regionalized is, is important. Then, if you go take a look at the profiling configuration tab, and if you go and look at all of the different probes that we have in there, these are the ones that are enabled by default. And this is because, you know, these are, are basically essential, uh, we believe, and that's why they're enabled by default. And they're also not likely to cause any crazy performance issues. So uh, we have some people that like to go in here and just go, ah, more is better. I'm just going to turn on everything. And they don't really understand the performance impacts of that. So I, I caution you before just turning everything on. Uh, don't do that without reading our ICE profiling design guide to make sure you understand the implications of doing those kinds of things. But the value of each of these protocols is each one has different capabilities, different attributes that you can use, uh, DHCP and RADIUS and, and MAP probably being the most valuable. And then depending upon whether you have Active Directory or not, that could be good. Um, HTTP basically is how you would determine, especially if you have like guests coming in or you a lot of Wi-Fi networks, HTTP is the only way you can really determine an, an iOS device unless you start using that new Wi-Fi edge analytics capability. Uh, so those are kind of the options. So again, just don't think more is better uh, without understanding the performance capabilities and impacts. Uh, so if you do want to go use some of these other, other probes or you do want to optimize them, I highly recommend you look at our ICE profiling design guide where we go through a lot of this. Uh, it's, it's a massive document, so I don't think you could get through it uh, in a day. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely use it for the parts that you that you need or you want to understand better, including the configuration of things like device sensor uh, or other things. Matt, was there anything you want to mention about this? No, I think that's exactly right. You know, it's going to depend on what you need to learn about the endpoints on your network, right? As, as you were saying, Thomas, about um, if you've got a large guest presence or not. Um, so be mindful. Um, but the more you can learn about an endpoint, the better, and, and just be careful about what you really need to learn and, and what's gonna be relevant for the endpoints you're trying to profile. All right, so um, the last thing on, on this kind of some, some recommendations is, you know, if you are looking for some things, these are kind of the things that, that people are looking for um, when they go and turn these things on. Uh, probably device sensor is one of the greatest things you can do if you have uh, Cisco Catalyst devices and even the Meraki MS390s, you can get the device sensor uh, sent in radius and the radius to county message. That's a great way to do it. Uh, maybe you have some devices that use SNMP uh, like printers. That's a great, that's a really common one. Uh, they're heavily SNMP managed. So to be able to uh, query printers with SNMP. And like I said, DHCP, there's a lot of incredibly good information in, in DHCP. Uh, so those are some some really good ways to do it. DNS is basically doing a reverse uh, DNS lookup to get the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name. And then the user agent in HTTP, like I said, is what what tells you the um, the iPhone or iPad or iPad OS or whatever um, to differentiate Apple devices. 
So those are some of the different things. Um, the further you go down, you know, be careful with those. Make sure you check, especially NetFlow. Uh, what we find is people think, oh, NetFlow, this will tell me all my flows and all the protocols and where they're going, all this kind of stuff. And they just start piping all this NetFlow into the, the ICE nodes. And wow, um, that is not what the ICE nodes are meant for. <laughs> so you need to be very, very specific with and judicious with your, your NetFlow usage. So don't just start piping stuff in. And if you are going to do it, um, you probably don't want to do it on your ICE management interface uh, or your guest interface. Uh, so, you know, those are some of the considerations you need to make. Otherwise, you'll start to, if you wonder why you aren't able to log in, it might be because you're piping in too much NetFlow into your management port on your ICE nodes. Uh, so things like that. So the other thing uh, about, about setting up Profiler is, you know, out of the box, it should just work for the most part. Uh, if you have things like device sensor set up on your, on your switches, uh, on your wireless controllers, it should just start sending the information over very easily. Um, and then all these other things, I'll just mention real quick. One of the biggest things in the general profiler settings is what we call the COA type or radius change of authorization. So what happens if an endpoint is reprofiled into something different than um, just unknown? What do you wanna do with it? So by default, we do nothing. Basically, think of this as like a visibility mode. Uh, we're we're just we're just here to see what's out there. We're not gonna we're not gonna make any change. We're not gonna recategorize. We're not gonna reauthorize anything. Um, but if something changed from an unknown to an IP phone, for example, uh, then you could actually send a port bounce to a switch port to say, I need you to to switch that interface off and back on again. And the reason why we do that is because if you have an endpoint out there that is relying on DHCP and whatever VLAN it happens to land in to get that IP address, uh, it doesn't necessarily know if you've changed a VLAN out from under it. You can you can actually tell ICE to uh, send a new VLAN, send a new um, ACL, um, SGT, you can do all these things and, and the device will never know. The only way it knows that something's changed is if you do that port bounce. Um, the problem with port bounce, of course, is that if you have multiple endpoints connected to that port, so behind that IP phone, you have a person on a laptop that is on a WebEx <laughs> uh, trying to get some real work done and you, and you uh, bounce that port, you know, that might be a problem, especially if they're presenting on a webinar or something. So you may not want to do that, uh, which is why we have the re-auth. And so uh, if you have multi-auth capability and you're not going to be changing the VLAN on them, then that's where that re-auth option is, is really good. So just be aware of these different things and what kind of uh, behavior change it might have um, on your users or your endpoints when you do bounce those things. Uh, the other one is, um, any, if anybody looks at this one, uh, this was new in ICE 3.3, but it's going to be going away in 3.3 P1. We decided it maybe wasn't such a good idea after all, once we had more customers playing with it and testing it. So this is going to go away. Don't worry about that one. Uh, if you've never seen that, I wonder what it is. Um, the other one is MUD. Uh, so this is something that I haven't seen used a lot, um, but it is, it's called manufacturer usage description. Um, and basically it, it comes in over this thing called an IoT asset uh, topic in PX grade context in. So uh, this is another option. You probably aren't going to need it, uh, but I just want to mention it to you. And then this one is uh, we were talking with with uh, some other folks, and this is one that it's enabled by default, and uh, there's a reason. So don't turn that off unless you you know what you're doing. But we think you should just leave it. I think eventually they're going to take that one away too. So it's just it's always on. Uh, but these are some things we kind of keep evolving the the settings and, and the profiler. Um, and then finally, if if you do want to, if you are worried about any kind of um, cross site scripting, then you can go ahead and enable that for HTTP. All right. So if in case you're wondering what your network devices can do in terms of profiling uh, device sensor, things like that, we recommend you take a look at our NAD capabilities guide. And you can see these different columns that kind of tell you uh, model by model what each one can do. And I will warn you right now that we're not gonna tell you every single model and license level and all that kind of stuff. 
we typically do it per family of devices. And we just try to give you some guidance that yes, it's been validated and it should work. Everything should be fine, uh, but we're not gonna do every single last model. Um, and so just kind of abstract it out in terms of, you know, if it's supported for the IE switches, it probably works for all the IE switches. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. And then the other thing is Meraki. So uh, if you're looking to do profiling, the Meraki MS390 is, is really the, the flagship switching model to be able to have full profiling capabilities. Um, probably the most glaring thing here is that the wireless access points do not have profiling capabilities. So beware of that. Um, so currently, if you have Meraki, we really don't have a way to do it. The good news is that Meraki does its own profiling for you in the in Meraki dashboard. So you'll have that option, but you won't get that information sent into iShed. So I know I know that that's somewhere in their in their pipeline of things to do, but it's currently it's not there yet. All right. So uh, the next thing is basically I wanted to talk about uh, how we can take a look at profiling and perform some updates on the feed server. So the first thing you typically wanna do is you may wanna go look at all of your different profiles. You can see we have like just, a, just under 700 of them here by default. Uh, and if you wanna take a change your columns, these are all the columns that are available, so you can't really change anything. Uh, but it does have a quick filter. And I love this capability because when you have, you know, hundreds of profiles, it really helps to be able to filter on them. In this case, let's look at some Windows ones. And you're like, wait a second, where the heck is Windows 11? I don't see Windows 11 anywhere. Um, and so what you want to do, uh, we'll, we'll actually go update that. But in the meantime, notice how all your profiling policies can be nicely organized into a hierarchy. So in the case of Android, that's another thing that has a lot of different uh different categories of things. Uh, so you, you can get very granular in terms of how you organize the hierarchy. And then also with logical profiles, you can actually group different classes of devices. Um, so in this case, this is great for different vendors all doing IP phones. You can just select them, move them over into a logical profile. Now you have all the IP phones in a single group. If you don't care who it is, just put them all into one. You can do that as well. And AI profiles will come back too. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to update the ICE profiling feed service, there's an online update and there's an offline update. So what we're going to do is we're quickly going to do an online update. So first thing I like to do is test that feed service. Make sure you have a connection because if you have an air gap network, probably not going to work. Uh, and you can see currently we have never done an update down here. So we want to perform that update. So let's do an update now. And it's going to warn you that, by the way, when you do this, if you've made any modifications, you've done anything to the existing uh, profiles in ICE, that it, it will uh, potentially perform that change of authorization and update them. And then while that's happening, I also want to show you the offline process. So if we go into the offline process, um, it takes you to a, a portal site uh, where we can basically say, yeah, we, we agree to the use. And once we're through there, we can go in and take a look at the offline feed service. So to do this, um, there's uh, the profiling package and there's also an OUI package, a Mac OUI organizational um, identifier. And so by generating the package, um, you can either see what's in, you can inspect it first or you can just go ahead and download it like I'm going to do. So that's good. Uh, and then if we want to go ahead and get the, the OUI package as well, We can generate that package. And that's it, only good to 2.7 and later, not previous versions. So then we can go ahead and download that. All right. So once we've done that, we can go back into ICE. And we can go ahead and try to upload those things. So here uh, we can choose our package that we downloaded and open it up. And what you should see is that you can't apply the update. And the reason why you can't is because we've already triggered an update, an online update in the background. So it's not going to let us do this manually, but that would be the process. Then we just import it, right? Meanwhile, we flip back and you can see we did have an update happen. And so now we can go back and take a look at our profiling policies. 
And now we went from 676 to 801 profiles. Now if we use that quick filter again, search on Windows, hopefully you can see that we actually pushed out a Windows 11 workstation profile through the feed service, all right? So that's how you can do this um, automatically through the feed service. I will warn you that that process does take 20 or 30 minutes. Um, I kind of optimize it with uh, the magic of, of video editing here, but that's the process basically of, of getting those those updates done. All right. And and right. Thomas, just before you you move on, yeah. Um, yeah so we're we're really thrilled that we added those hundred and twenty some odd uh, profiles, and and that's where we'll continue to add profiles is via the feed service. So um, for those of you you know in our earlier uh, Slido poll um, who said you were using Cisco provided rules. This is just building on that base and expanding that um, so that you have even more rules to draw from or profiles, excuse me, to draw from um, for your profiling, reducing those unknowns with basically as little work as possible from your end, just making sure you're up to date with the feed service and moving on from there. And so hopefully um, over time, you know, there's less of a need for you to create uh, your own profiles and more just relying on, on the feed service as we continue to add those profiles um, and, and those updates. Yeah, perfect. Um, you, you did notice when we did the profiling update, you saw this little warning pop up. So the idea here is uh, when you do download those, you know, 120 something additional profiles through the feed service, if um, anything needs to get reprofiled, if anything kind of matches any of those endpoint attributes that we get match those updated profiles. It basically reprofiles them and it could lead to a change in authorization. So depending upon your, your global settings or your individual profile settings, um, that may happen. So just be aware of that detail uh, that that could happen. Uh, and so just again, keep in mind your change of authorization settings. Uh, then if you do want to customize your profiling policies. So um, in this case, we have a Cisco 9130 um, access point. Um, if you do want to customize, we recommend that you take an existing profile and duplicate it and customize it into your own. Because if you just change this and then you do that profiling feed service update and, it ch and we decide that we change any rules or certainty factors or anything like that, it's gonna get updated and it's gonna reevaluate all your access points, right? That have that capability potentially. So those are the kinds of things that you wanna be aware of. So if you do wanna customize, you recommend you duplicate ours and make your own and hopefully use a, a higher certainty factor um, and other custom rules to, to make it uh, a better match for your network and your environment, your, your endpoints. So when we when we do this um, customizing endpoint profiling policies, what we typically see people do is they want to uh, maybe change the minimum certainty factor um, if they think it's uh, a higher number depending upon how they organize things. You can get up to sixty five thousand <laughs> uh, in the in terms of the certainty factor. I've I've never seen anybody go that high. Um, it's typically in the hundreds or the you know the thousands, but never sixty five thousand. So that may be something that you want to. Uh, keep in mind when you create your own custom profiles is maybe you want a higher certainty factor. We typically keep it under 100 uh, for for the default profiles inside of ISIN and the feed service, but you can go higher and that'll definitely match yours if you have a higher certainty factor. And the way you get that certainty factor is through the use of rules down here. Uh, so you can use our existing rules or you can create your own rules. And the idea is every time there is a match on a condition, it will add a certain number of points to the certainty factor. And so you can see here, basically, if either one of these matches or both matches, you'll either get 30 or 60 as your total certainty factor. And that would definitely match the minimum on this profiling policy. Uh, I talked to you earlier about the global profiler settings for change of authorization. Right, and we have those different options up there. Uh, keep in mind that this is the global setting. This applies to all endpoint profiles by default. Um, and so whichever one you decide to use, totally up to you based on how far along you are in your profiling and your enforcement. And then if you go look at those endpoint profiles, you will notice that we also have the option 
to change the associated change of authorization type per profile. So if you decide that, you know what, I'm going to keep it as no COA for everything by default, except uh, these pesky access points for these, I definitely am going to change it to port bounds or something, right? Um, then you can go ahead and change it on a per profile basis. So hopefully this gives you the flexibility uh, to either, again, do it globally everywhere, or if you've got these one-offs, you only want to do it for these certain devices, but not others, you have that capability in the, in the, in the uh, profiles themselves. Now, if you did want to create your own profiles, we have a couple different options for you. Uh, you can, of course, like I said, you can just go create your own from scratch. You can duplicate one of our existing ones and then go make modifications and change those certainty factors and conditions to match your needs. Or uh, if you get really sophisticated, you can actually use some imports of you know, profiles. Um, I've seen uh, some of our partners, they have, uh, they've gone off and they've made these incredible uh, conditions and, and different things that you can just import into ICE. So it really just depends on how you want to do it. If you wanted to collect a bunch of information about your devices, export it, make an Excel set spreadsheet and uh, convert it to XML, or I've even seen one of our partners doing it with Pandas recently. That was pretty cool. Uh, you have the ability to create these things and then import it as an XML file uh, to get it done that way. So uh, when you do this, like I said, you have the ability to create a new endpoint profile. You can do your minimum certainty factor. And of course, you can create conditions very much like you do in the condition studio for the ICE policy sets. Uh, it's very much like that in terms of how you can um, add and delete conditions and then set the, the certainty factors. All right, Matt, you want to talk about Wi-Fi analytics? There we go. So Wi-Fi edge analytics is for those endpoints that, you know, hopefully you don't have to create custom profiles for. So the, the, the process that Thomas just took you through is, is great for a lot of endpoints, um, particularly those that are more niche um that it's hard to predict you know across customers what kind of uh, endpoints you'll have but it's safe to assume that our customers are going to have um samsung apple and intel endpoints on their network uh connecting over wi-fi and so to that end we've added a new feature set uh to help you profile those endpoints so we've got a relationship with each of these three manufacturers where um, their endpoints will actually basically call out and self-profile and and say exactly what they are and, and share particular attributes. Um, and the profiling, uh, excuse me, the profiling policies uh, are basically there and, and ready to go um, from your 9800 WLC. So I will let Thomas take you through how it's happening, but the point here is to reduce friction and allow you to focus on profiling those weird niche endpoints um, rather than the ones that you know you're gonna get day in and day out. Yeah, so let you take us through this. Yep, perfect. Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi Edge Analytics basically gets these attributes from these vendors. The, the Catalyst access point controllers are able to get this information uh, from these devices and map it into these attributes. And effectively, these are all uh, in a data dictionary inside of ICE. And we can now use this information in our profiling policies or even in our authorization policies in order to make decisions about them. And uh, the one thing that you need to be aware of is make sure that you don't do not have the whoops went too far on that. Uh, make sure that you do not have the endpoint attribute filter enabled um, because it'll potentially filter those out. We don't want that. So uh, make sure that's disabled before you attempt to use uh, the Wi-Fi analytics capability. And then to turn it on in your Cisco Catalyst controller, the WLC, uh, then you just go ahead and make sure you have all three of these boxes checked and that's how it's gonna get delivered. It basically sends it over uh, just like device sensor, it sends it in the radius accounting information straight into ICE uh, whenever the device is uh, authorized. All right. So we've talked about um, creating custom attribute, uh, custom profiles. We've talked about getting profiles from the speed service and, and now from Wi-Fi Edge Analytics. Um, but there's also AIML. Um, 
And you may have seen this banner here pop up a few times. Um, forwarding endpoint attribute data will improve your endpoint profiling. Uh, what's that about? What does that really mean? And this is about um, enabling AIML to do some of that work for you. So we will take you through that. Um, what's going to happen here is you're going to take your endpoint data, um, both known and unknown, and that will get forwarded to uh, an ML cloud instance um, where we've got an engine running, and that's a cloud that we manage. Um, and all of your attributes will go there. Um, so again, you can see we've got some smart bulbs, we've got some uh, some tablets, some laptops, some security cameras, but a, a whole group of unknowns, maybe groups of unknowns, TBD. Um, the ML engine is going to take a look at all of those endpoints. And it's going to say, you know, based on, again, going back to our funnel of sources and attributes, based on these attributes, whether it's two attributes, seven attributes, um, it's going to do what's called a K-means analysis for those who are interested. Um, and it's going to say, you know, you've got four distinct groups here. And, and based on attributes X, Y, and Z, we've got a group of red endpoints and attributes one, two, and three, we've got orange endpoints and so on and so forth. Um, and then you can look at those profiles, uh, look at those attributes, and you can actually say, well, yeah, looking at this, those red endpoints, um, those are Meraki cameras. And all you have to do is basically punch in the labels you want. Um, in this case, it uses four labels. So the custom, um, Profile, the certainty factor profile uses that single label. Um, and in this case, we're going to use those multi factor uh, classifiers. So you've got manufacturer, model, operating system, and endpoint type. And you're going to say this is made by Meraki. Um, it's the model one, two, three. It's a security camera running this OS. Um, however, you may have um, a, a situation where the ML engine has identified a cluster of, let's say, a thousand endpoints. Um, 300 of those have already been classified as PlayStations. But the ML engine has observed that actually if you adjust the, uh, the attributes ever so slightly, you get 1,000 that match it. Um, and it may suggest, you know, hey, we've got uh, X you know, percent are already labeled as PlayStations, but we think it's all the same um, endpoint type in this cluster. Do you want to just call them PlayStations? Manufactured by Sony, running this this operating system, and you can just accept or deny. Um, so basically, again, all about reducing friction, allowing um, AI and, M and ML to do that work for you of reducing unknowns um, and very quickly and easily labeling your endpoints. So how do we really do that? What does that actually look like? Um, nice. Um, so first you are going to uh, agree. Um, Right, we've, we've got a user license agreement as a new configuration. Um, we'll make sure we get that config file and that's what we're creating right now. Um, and once you've got that, you wanna download it, keep it somewhere. That way, if you have to reload, re-image your deployment, you've got that. Um, so that's, that's good to store. Um, and then we will go and we will check our cloud connectivity down here at the bottom. So you see it says connection verified. Um, that'll actually take 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so we'll go back to endpoint classification and go to profiler. So over here, you can see it says we're not connected. Um, again, that's that's where it's the 15 to 20 minutes. So um, that'll get connected shortly. So we'll go over to our profiler setting. Um, this is where you turn on that MFC profiling and, and we'll show you those labels. Um, to go. If you're using endpoint analytics, you can set that up down here as well. Go so back to endpoint classification. And there are those four multi factor classifiers. The endpoint type is a workstation, the manufacturer is Microsoft. We don't have a model, but we know it's running Windows 10. And if you go down into attributes, click over there to other attributes and scroll down, you can see those MFC attributes right there again, those same labels. Um, and those can be used again also in, in um and segmentation as well. So now you can see as we're connected, no proposed rules. It says it'll take seven days. That's actually down to one day now before you start to receive proposals. And through the magic of a little time travel, we have two proposed rules here that we can propose profiling policies that we can evaluate. We've got Lexmark printers and Samsung devices. 
um, 50 endpoints in that cluster and let's take a look at it. There are those labels. We can edit them if we'd like. Um, maybe we want to say it's a Samsung Galaxy X7. Um, you know, the endpoint type is a mobile device and there's that profiling policy. So you can see the attributes, the values, the logic, it's all and. And we're gonna label this so we can find it later. So this is our this is our Samsung AI profile. Now we can review endpoints if you want to check out are these in fact Samsung endpoints? Do we like this? Do we want to change anything? You can check out the endpoints in the cluster. And if we're good to go, you can go ahead and accept it. And now it's part of our profiling policies. You can go review that where you'd check out any other any other uh, profiling policy in the profiling work center. On the left, you already saw this menu with Thomas earlier. We've got our profiling policies, our logical profiles, and there's that new grouping of AI profiles. And there's our Samsung AI profile. There are the labels. And you can see the attributes and the logic. So it can be and, it can be or. Um, ML is going to figure that out for you, what the best way to, to identify this distinct group of endpoints. Um, and you can delete all, you can delete selected, and so on. So a couple things to note here. Um, oh, Thomas, were you about to jump in? Uh, no, go ahead, man. Oh, cool. Perfect. Perfect. So first and foremost, um, no PII is sent to the cloud. Um, so you can check out our, our privacy data sheet, um, but there's no PII sent to the cloud. And additionally, um, it's only looking at endpoints in your environment. So you don't have to worry about any, you know, cross-contamination here or something, you know, along the line of a, um, a bad profile from someone else spoiling the batch. It's, it's going to look at the endpoints in your network and your network only. And Matt, uh, we should probably tell people PII means personally identifiable information. Thank you. That is exactly <laughs> right. That is exactly right. So for whoever said uh, they were worried about um, profiling medical devices, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with PII and, and you know, you wouldn't want this uh, getting ported out. So um, no PII is going to the cloud. Uh, it does require an advantage license. It is not currently available, uh, available in eval um, licensing. Um, and you do have to have that cloud connectivity to connect to the ML engine. Um, so for now, uh, no air gapped support, um, but it is a, a great feature. Um, we're certainly eager for feedback on it. Um, you can see that beta tag there. Um, so if you use it and you play with it, let us know what you think. Let us know what works, what you'd like to see, uh, and so on. Um, and then finally, I'll have uh, Thomas take us through how to profile with integrations. Yeah, so the idea here is um, we want to be able to allow the extension of profiling capabilities, um, either because um, you have these other uh, partners that you've maybe already purchased or are using them for your uh, specific vertical needs. Uh, we know that uh, these partners, Armis, Medigate Order, they're very good about doing um, integrations with specific verticals. Uh, and so that is something that you may find very, very useful. So if that is something that you're looking for, uh, because by default, like we said, the ICE built-in profiles do not understand or know about specialized uh, medical or like DICOM or um, other manufacturing protocols in order to, in order to talk to a manufacturing um, PLC on a, on a manufacturing floor um, that takes specialized protocols. ICE doesn't do that. And so that's where um, you can use any of these partners or uh, we actually have integrations as well with Cisco's Endpoint Analytics and Cisco CyberVision. CyberVision does do those uh, manufacturing um, type protocols and then feeds, these all work the same way where they feed this information into ICE through a PX grid topic. And that allows them to let us know what they've discovered. So when we see a specific MAC address, we know that it is a specific device type. So the way this works is uh, PX Grid, basically whenever uh, any of our, our partner applications 
um, discover an endpoint or want to profile it, they can send this information into us via this IoT asset topic. And then we can populate these attributes with all the endpoints by MAC address. And then we can use these different things to create different profiles. And so that's how that works. So Matt, okay, why don't you covered... tell us what you think is best? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've covered a lot of different ways to profile here. Um, the system rules in the feed service, uh, those Wi-Fi edge analytics, AIML, custom integration. So what is best for what type of endpoint? And you know, this is this is a good framework to think about it. Um, there will be exceptions to to every rule, um, as you can imagine. But for the Cisco provided ones, those are going to cover the endpoints you're expecting to see on your network generally. Um, you know, I, I think of them sometimes as the vanilla endpoints. Um, your printers, your IP phones, certainly your Cisco devices, your workstations. Um, those are going to be covered in those uh, the system rules. They'll be added to the feed service. Um, that's that's what you should expect here. Um, and, and we'll continue to improve the feed service and, and add more endpoints. Um, excuse me, more profiles. The Wi-Fi edge analytics are going to be, as you would expect, your Apple, Samsung, and Intel um, mobile devices. So your tablets, your phones, um, some workstations as well. Um, but that's going to cover those, which is, you know, hopefully going to take a lot of volume off your hands. Um, and then we've got those AI proposed profiles. Those are going to be great for IoT endpoints. Um, the ones that uh, are a little bit more specific, a little bit more unique, more niche. Um, you may not have, you know, the organizational information, you know, where um, Thomas was talking earlier about it's tagged to a particular department. So let AIML look at it and say, you've got a thousand endpoints here that are all the same thing. And you can go in and say, yep, that is in fact a, um, a thermostat. That is in fact a security camera. The custom profiles are going to be the ones that are specific to your environment, specific to your industry, maybe whether it's a, a you know, point of sale endpoint, a robotic arm, a retail scanner, um, certain medical devices that are particularly niche. Um, that's where you're going to want to create that yourself, most likely. Um, if AIML can't pick it up um, and it's not covered, you know, it's not an Apple device and it's not covered in our system rules because it's it's a little bit more narrow. Um, and then finally, you've got integrations. Integrations are going to depend. So, you know, we, we say choose wisely. Uh, that's all going to depend on your network, the endpoints you've got in your environment um, and, and the technology you choose, right? Different profiling technologies will have different advantages um, and, and drawbacks. And so um, that's about just being thorough and making sure you do your due diligence, right? CyberVision, um, for example, very well known for manufacturing. Um, so that, that may be the right choice there. Um, so it, it's gonna depend, uh, but this gives you a good framework to operate within about what type of endpoint should be profiled. You should expect to have profiled via which method. So one of the last things I want to talk about is the ICE endpoint analysis tool. So this is something um, that uh, we've actually had for many years now, and it's a, actually an app that you can run. You can just download it uh, and run it on your, your local computer, whether Mac OS or Windows. And uh, if you go look at the, the FAQ there and the uh, up top right, you can actually see that unfortunately, um, endpoint uh, analysis tool uh, is only supported up to ICE 2.6. Uh, and if we take a look at um, ICE 2.6, it's scheduled to be end of support uh, coming up this early this next year. Uh, so when I tried it, um, I signed up, put in my information, and then could not even connect to the activation servers. Uh, so it's it's looking like the endpoint analysis tool is is not going to be um, working much longer. So I would say it's also going to be end of life. So any of you that had heard of it or wondered about it or wanted to ask about it, I wanted to make sure we included this just so you kind of knew what was going on with it. Uh, so just be aware of that detail. Um, it basically was a way of exporting uh, a bunch of attributes out of ICE and then sort of doing a, um, basically putting all the attributes together and kind of coming up with some endpoint profiles or allowed you to create endpoint profiles from them. Uh, 
so you can still do that on your own, but just not with the endpoint analysis tool. It's not something we're going to be supporting uh, going forward. So just wanted you to be aware of that detail. And then finally, uh, I'm a big uh, fan of our APIs and Matt, you also happen to be our API product manager, right? That's correct. Yeah. So we couldn't uh, finish this webinar off without talking about APIs and automation. So I wanted you to be aware that uh, there is a profiler profile API, really only good for getting a list of the profiles, not very helpful there. Uh, but something you've hopefully seen me do in previous webinars is edit those endpoint custom attributes. Uh, and so we do have APIs specifically uh, for creating those custom attributes now. Um, beginning in ICE 3.3, we added the custom attributes API. Before, you could only uh, create them and edit the uh, the available attributes in the ICE GUI. Now you can do it. You can actually create them via API, which is awesome. And then uh, if you want to go ahead and get the endpoints out of ICE, uh, you have an endpoint and an endpoints uh, REST API. So you can get all those. And whenever you do that, you will see all the custom attributes associated with them. So those are some of your options there for APIs. Matt, did you anything else you wanted to mention about APIs? No, I, I think that's that's it for now. Um, okay. This is this is a good overview of where we are. Um, as you'd expect any PM to say, I've, I've got ideas on the roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to share them with us today. Not yet. <laughs> right. No problem. Uh, now I'll just mention to everybody, uh, you are going to get a webinar survey pop up afterwards. We would love to hear what you thought of today's webinar, especially having a product manager on here. We haven't done that, I don't think, before ever or it's been a long time so uh if you liked hearing from matt um, one of our product managers um, let us know what you think there let us know what other things you want to hear about and we'll try to accommodate those in future ice webinars uh, and then don't forget if you do have additional questions about ice profiling or anything else in ice we do have an amazing community out there um, you can see um, if you're looking for troubleshooting help definitely see how to ask the community make sure you get all the the necessary details um, in there. And other than that, um, these are the resources from things we talked about today. And Matt, anything else you want to say before we close it out? This was great. I, I was thrilled to be able to participate, share a little bit more about what we're doing with uh, with ICE profiling. And, um, you know, it's an area we want to continue to improve. So keep an eye out as we um, tinker and change and, and add new functionality. Cool. And then Rigo, do we have any questions from the audience? Hey, Thomas, I was just scanning through our Q and A's and I do see uh, one outstanding question that I was hoping we can address live if, it, yeah. uh, live, if it's okay with both of you. Uh, and that question is, what happens with randomized MAC address? In, in smartphones, it, it is very common. Is it possible to use profiling with the endpoints that has this feature enabled? Yeah, so the great thing about profiling is that, you know, the the MAC address itself, the OUI, the Organizationally Unique Identifier, is part of some of these rules. But the great thing about profiling is you can actually increase your certainty factor based on some of these other attributes, like things you would find in the DHCP header, so that maybe the OUI isn't as important. It's only maybe you only give it you know 10 points or 30 points, but you give 100 points to a DHCP uh, header identifier that that says that it's the host name is um apple something right or uh what the device type is there's lots of good information that's hidden inside of those those other headers um, same thing with device sensor if you have cdp information and other things so it really doesn't matter what the mac address is uh, but usually you're going to see random macs with with mobile devices that are trying to do that for privacy so that's why i mentioned it's probably going to be like an apple device or a samsung device or one of those things and that's where that wi-fi edge analytics can really benefit you because don't really care about those random macs that they're generating for privacy we can still detect it thanks to our partnership with intel samsung and apple Excellent. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, that about does it for our uh, Q&A. I think we've uh, addressed all of the questions. And thank you to cool. our panelists as well.